Welcome to Hemodynamic Case Studies. I'm Mort Kern from Long Beach VA Hospital and University of California, Irvine. We're going to present a case of hemodynamics obtained in the treatment of a patient with cardiac tamponade. This 29-year-old woman had systemic lupus erythematosus nephritis renal failure, and progressive shortness of breath while on dialysis. She did have atypical chest pain as well. She was brought into the hospital on a physical examination. Blood pressure was 120-80, although the respiratory variation was large, as we will see. Neck vein elevation, distant heart sounds, tachycardia, narrow pulse pressure, clear lungs, and it looked like there was some uh, fluid retention in the abdomen. Her arterial pressure in the intensive care unit is shown here. The scale is 200. You can see the marked respiratory variation and the exaggerated drop in systolic pressure during inspiration of uh, 30 to 35 millimeters of mercury. This is a typical example of pulses paradoxus which is relieved after tamponade is cured. The diagnosis also begins with the uh, echocardiogram. Here is a still frame from an echocardiographic uh, image which was transmitted by cell phone to the physician at home. Uh, you can see the pericardial effusion around the heart uh, which is the black area outside the white border of the cardiac silhouette. The pericardial effusion is greatest in the lower left of this image from about 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock on the diagram. It also consistent with right ventricular and right atrial collapse during inspiration and diastole. We see the greater than 25% decrease in mitral flow velocity, which is uh, consistent with tamponade physiology. Pericardiocentesis was performed in the cardiac cath lab, first uh, uh, inserting a catheter into the femoral vein doing a right heart cath, then parking this catheter in the right atrium, then through a sub-xiphoid approach, giving some uh, lidocaine and angling the needle under the uh, sternal sub-xiphoid process toward the left shoulder at a shallow angle, encountered the pericardial space. Uh, we do this on pressure monitoring and identify the fact that the pericardial pressure was now equal or nearly equal to the right atrial pressure, that it wasn't right ventricular pressure, uh, and we inserted a guide wire in through our pericardial needle to the pericardial space, which is shown on the left, and you can see the guide wire wrapping around the heart, not going out the RV outflow tract. And this was then replaced with a pericardial catheter, which is shown on the right side of this uh, frame. With that, we were able to record hemodynamics while we extracted uh, and removed. Here are the hemodynamic panels uh, which demonstrates some very remarkable findings. Starting on the upper left, we see the right ventricular pressure, a very bizarre looking pressure waveform, uh, which has got a diastolic pressure of on average 20 and marked respiratory variation in the size of these pressure waves. On the top right, we see initially the wedge pressure, again averaging about 20, and the PA pressure as we move across past the gray bar showing again PA pressure with diastolic pressures of around 20. On the lower panel left we see the right atrial pressure. It has a respiratory variation with absence of any phasic waveforms. On the right side after a few milliliters of pericardial fluid is removed and the pericardial catheter now uh, recording pressure in the blue tracing, we see that at times the pericardial pressure exceeds atrial pressure, accounting for the collapse of 
uh, right atrium wall during diastole. These three tracings here show progressive decrease of the right atrial pressure and corresponding pericardial pressure, right atrial pressure in yellow and pericardial pressure in blue, and with a removal of 300, 600, and 900 milliliters of fluid, you can see that the RA pressure has fallen from 20, now down to about 8. Pericardial pressure has fallen to about 2 on the far right lowest panel. Here are the final right atrial pressure, averaging about 3 with restoration of the uh, A and B waves in this uh, patient. The pericardial pressure cannot be seen, only very small pieces of that pressure as it rises from its negative position. On the right side it was the starting right atrial pressure, and you can see the marked difference in the response after draining the pericardium completely. I hope you found these tracings of interest, and in future hemodynamic cases we will uh, provide other examples of uh, tamponade in which the pericardium uh, was emptied, but the right atrial pressure did not fall completely to zero, uh, describing the condition of effusive constrictive pericardial disease. Thank you.